Merry Christmas from all of us at 12 WKRC. From the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, California, welcome to a Christmas celebration at the Crystal Cathedral. Tonight, Dr. Robert Schuler, pastor of the Crystal Cathedral, invites you to join with him and millions around the world via satellite for an inspiring Christmas Eve candlelight service. This truly is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh God, this is the night that you've prepared with lights, music, smiles, and tears of joy and sorrow that wait to be healed. Oh God, we are a part of a whole worldwide body of persons who opened up our hearts tonight to love, to joy, and to peace. Yes, to the one who symbolizes that more than anyone else, even Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are his faithful believers. Amen. Oh Lord, we come tonight on this full moon night to celebrate your love and to pray that our lives will reflect the light of the love and the joy and the peace and the encouragement of Jesus Christ. Oh God, the world needs Jesus tonight. May they find him in us. Amen.
Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Then Je Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife and did not know her till she brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Angels don't feel
teacher is what you could be or maybe a fisherman out on the sea But who would imagine a king? It was so clear when the wise men arrived and the angels were singing your name that the world would be different cause you That's when heaven stood still to proclaim the name of Jesus, oh Jesus, born to be King of Kings. Something special to me And of all of the wonderful gifts he could bring Who would imagine Who would imagine Who would imagine A king Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in their fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born unto you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you, you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel the multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward all.
Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain and over the hills and everywhere. Why don't you tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born? Down in a lonely manger, that humble child was born. God gave us salvation. seated. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, myrrh. And now as the wise men joyously presented their gifts to the Christ child, we have the opportunity in this moment Christmas Eve to share our gifts with Christ. May God bless the gift and the giver. Amen.
It was 40 years ago that we conducted our first Christmas Eve candlelight service in a little tiny chapel here in Garden Grove. It was my joy to lead that service. And in these 40 years, the numbers of services each year increases until tonight. We have seven services, one after another. And this church service right here is number 189 in the history of this church. And through the past several years, no member of this church is more celebrated in the musical world than Roger Williams, the pianist to the presidents. And every year, however busy he is, as a good member of this church, he changes everything to come and perform for us. Roger Williams, this is a beautiful night because you are here. Thank you. Dr. Schuler, I just, uh, I just heard that the businessmen are saying that this is going to be the greatest Christmas ever. I kind of thought the first one was. <laughs> ah, that first Christmas Eve. All was calm, all was bright.
Roger Williams at the piano, and thank you, Fred Swan, at the great pipe organ. Welcome, whoever you are, wherever you are from. Somebody is in the audience, I'm told, from Scotland. They were here this past Sunday morning, father, mother, and son, and introduced themselves to a staff man. Beautiful story. They said that they had been watching this hour of power every Sunday for many, many years. They belong to a little church of seven mem 70 members, and one of the members has a satellite, picks up the hour of power, videotapes it, and passes it among the 70 members every week. Interesting. Well, the boy who was with him was just a little guy when he first saw this hour of power coming every Sunday from the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, America, and it blessed him and it motivated him. I'm so thrilled that we have such a great ministry to young people. And he said to his folks, he said, someday we're going to go there for Christmas. His dad and mom said, it would be nice, but we can't afford it. He said, I'd love to see the glory of Christmas, the largest Christmas nativity stage set anywhere in the world. It's right here. And he said, I'd love to go to the Christmas Eve candlelight services. But they couldn't afford it. So he did something secretly. He started earning some secret money, and he saved it. And the other day, he said to his dad and mom, I got a Christmas surprise for you. I bought three tickets from Edinburgh to all Los Angeles, and we're going to the Crystal Cathedral for Christmas Eve, and he's here tonight, so thank him. Thank him for his faith. And I hope that he'll introduce himself to an usher so I can chat with him, talk to him about his dreams, his goals. I do not have a searing or a soaring or a snoring sermon. No rhetoric, just a bit of reality. No, you know, mundane lecture. No profound teaching. I mean, this is the day and age of the sound bite. So I'll give you a sanctified, sensational Christmas Eve sound bite. What was God trying to accomplish at Christmas anyway? Here is the sound bite. His aim was to reclaim his good name from the shame that human beings had put upon it. The human beings looked around and they saw the, the terrible things that people did to people and humans did to humans. And they said there can't be a God to let things like that happen. And even today, there are those who doubt God's existence because of the terrorism, the sin, and the evil that's in this world. So we need Christmas. God needs it. Yes, God needs it. He needs to be honored. He needs to be respected. And his aim is to reclaim the honor of his good name from those who put the shame on it. That's your sound bite. How would he do that? Interesting. He didn't choose to create a great political movement. He didn't even begin with the hierarchy of the religious establishments of the world of that day. Oddly enough, he chose a person. A single, solitary, simple little child and believe it or not, that's still the way God does his greatest things in the world today. Oh, yes. Through simple, solitary people who can reflect God's goodness and God's love. You know, I have a very good friend. I belong to an organization in America called Horatio Elders Association. It's a small club, only about 250 people. And most of them are names that are very famous that you would know of. <laughs> from Bob Hope on to presidents. But a few of them are names you don't know. Well, many of you are getting to know this name now in America because of the good work he's doing, but his name is Tom Harkin. Now, Tom Harkin was totally illiterate. That's because when he was a child, he had polio and it was in an iron lung and couldn't continue his schooling. And uh, so he had to drop out of school without learning to read. And he kept that a dark secret all through his life and covered it up and never let anybody know he was illiterate. 
and never exposed it until he stood in the judge's court to buy a wedding license, and with him was his fiancée. And they handed him a certificate that had to be filled out. And he had to look at her and say, Honey, you're going to have to help me. I can't read. That is Tom Harkin, one of the most admirable persons in the world today. I talked to him this morning to wish him Merry Christmas. I said, How's it going? He said, Oh, it's fabulous. This is just wonderful. He said, I took my grandson, Tom Harkin III, we call him Tracy, this morning, Christmas Eve day. I took him out and I said, let's go be a special Christmas gift to somebody. So we loaded toys in the back seat of the car, and Tom now, of course, is very wealthy. He can, no problem. Loaded the back seat with toys, and he said, we'll go to the poorest section of this town where the very poor live. And they went into that very poor section of his town in Texas. And the houses were just shacks. And where should they stop? They saw a postman. And pulled along the curly, called the postman and said, hey. The postman said, you're Tom Harkin. Tom said, yeah. Tom said, I need your help. We got a lot of stuff. We just like to bring some gifts to somebody who needs Christmas. You know anybody here? Oh, the postman says, you bet I know a lot of people like that. But Tom, you want to do that? See that shack over there? There's an old lady in there. She's 82 years old. She's black. And she's got nine grandchildren. She takes care of them. They live there. They eat there. They f she feeds them. She has nothing. There's no Christmas tree. Never is. No Christmas lights. There are no toys there. There are no presents. In fact, he said, Tom, let me take you. She loves me and I love her. So together, they walked to the door. He postman knocked. And there's the old black woman. And Tom Harker was introduced. And he looks at the six-year-old grandson and says, OK, get the toys. And they grab the toys and they haul them. And the, they, they give them all away, and everybody is so happy. And then Tom looked at the old lady and said, Now, what can I give you? She said, You already gave it to me. You gave me the faith again that there is a God and that he does love us and hasn't forgotten all about us. And she's crying. Tom said, I want to give you something. And he pulled out a $100 bill. And he handed it to her, and he said, Now, all you kids, this money is for your grandma. She's got to spend it for herself. She may not spend it on you. And then his little grandson, six years old, looked at her and said, Can I give you a hug? And she's crying, and the little six-year-old's crying, and they hugged. And Tom says, Merry Christmas. And then he uses the line from this church, God loves you, and so do I. Hey, that's Christmas. God's aim is to reclaim his good name from the human beings who have heaped shame on it. God looks down on this world. The stars have never shamed him. The moon has never shamed him. The fish of the sea and the birds never shamed him. Who does shame him? Human beings who are so sure that they are smarter than God. human beings who think they know all the answers and all their answers are right. I invite you tonight to understand what Christmas is about. God wants you to see the person he wants you to be. You alone, wherever you are, whatever you do, tonight I invite you to become a Christian. If you are a Christian, or want to become a Christian, while Silent Night is being sung, you light your little candle, hold it high, 
and let the light shine. I'd like to see the starlight go on in this whole cathedral. Now, are you watching in London tonight or Amsterdam or Berlin, Warsaw or Moscow, or maybe in Bethlehem? This is the first Christmas Eve televised church service to come to that honored village and say to you, thank you for making room in a stable for Jesus when he was born there 2,000 years ago. God wants you to be the extension of Jesus Christ in our life and in your life. Become a Christian. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm not saying become a, man, a, a, a member of some political bureaucracy that has a religious overtone. No. I'm not asking you to join the membership of this Crystal Cathedral. I'm asking you to say, God, Jesus needs to come back in this world. And I'll let him come back in my heart. I'll be the light of Christ, the love of Christ, the spirit of Jesus. I'll make a difference. And Lord, your aim to reclaim the honor of your good name from shame. I will honor you. Hallelujah. Amen.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to the networks of the world, the television stations of this country, and for bringing this television Christmas Eve service to hearts and homes more than I can imagine. I would give anything if I knew who you were, where you lived, and where you saw this. Drop me a letter. And now let us rise for the Christmas benediction and the joy to the world. We are a world uniting tonight, O oh God, across colors and languages, in music and in the message of peace and joy. We need a beautiful Savior, and we found him. May he give you peace forevermore. Merry Christmas. Magnificent message. What marvelous music. This time of the year, it seems to bring out the best in everyone. And we're glad you're with us tonight. And with us, joining us, very, very special friends, Tommy and Joe Lasorda. Tommy, the vice president of the Los Angeles Dodgers, just retired as manager because of health problems, but he's here tonight with his wife, Joe. Nice to have you, and Merry Christmas to both of you. Thank you, and thank you. Ed. And we've got to get your, how are you tonight? How I feel are you feeling? great. I'll tell you, this is actually unbelievable to see the uh, many, many people here to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ and through the efforts and hard work of Reverend Schuller. I mean, this has just been fantastic. The attitude and the spirit that's here tonight is second to none. What does this time of year mean to you, Joe? Well, seeing this church is fabulous because I was here when it was in a drive-in. And it's a wonderful church. And their messages are always for everyone. Something a little special this year for you, a little one. Talk a bit about th that blessing that's, that's come into your family. A little miracle. Well, we had a little granddaughter, Emily Tess Goldberg, who was celebrating, I guess, her 14 months right now. And she is the apple of our eye. And all I say is she's a bundle of joy. Tommy, in your case, this year you had the heart problems. We were very worried about you, as everyone else was. You were hospitalized. What did your religious feelings, what did this mean to you and help get you through? Well, without religion, I tell you, there is no hope uh, because you have to have faith. You have to have faith in Jesus Christ, number one. And if you have faith in Jesus Christ, then everything works out for you. And that's what carried me through the fear of dying because of a bad heart. So I'm very, very thankful to God for giving me life making it possible for me to still be with my family 
and to enjoy Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ. Joe, you had, had a little challenge or two while he was in the hospital. I, I, that was a lot of fun, huh? Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's trying to be at every place, but I was there all the time. Just trying to keep him settled and quiet was a job. Well, in, in having to have you retire as a result of this, how are you now career-wise, and how has this adjustment been for you? Well, I managed the Dodgers for 20 years, Ed, as you know, and it was a tremendous uh, career. I loved every minute of it, and when I decided to step down, Peter O'Malley decided to make me the vice president of the Dodgers. He said, Tommy, you have a lot of resources, and we want to tap them all. We want you to be able to look at players, evaluate them, scout players, teach players, and those are the things that I enjoy doing, Eddie, because I did those before I became the manager of Dodgers and did it while I was the manager of the Dodgers. We're glad you guys are with us, and God bless you, and, and a Merry Christmas to both of you. Thank you so much. And folks watching us at home, wherever you are around the world, remember that you're watching this through the courtesy of the television station. They're offering this to you for free, and we appreciate that. Write them, let them know. Also, write Dr. Schuler. It's Dr. Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. From all of us at the Crystal Cathedral, God loves you, and so do we, and Merry Christmas.